Great. Um, so I'm up first. Yeah, I'm going to do a quick intro first. Hold on one okay. second. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, Urban Assembly Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. Just a few announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to ask questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, this is just one of many different sessions happening as part of this college fair, so please do sign up for more. Uh, and a recording of this session will be available uh, within about a week at strivescan.com slash urban assembly. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenters now. And first up is Europe. Okay, great. Well, first, thank you all so much uh, for having me today. Uh, just by way of introduction, uh, my name is Shane Paris. I'm the recruitment specialist um, here at Europe in New York, New Jersey. Um, so basically what Europe is, um, Europe is a one-year career development program um, for young adults between the ages of 17 to 26. Um, so basically, um, you know, just to give you an idea of how the structure looks for Europe. Um, so Europe, again, it's a one-year program that consists of six months of classroom training. Um, and during those first six months of classroom training, you'll be receiving um, soft skills training as well as hard skills training. Now, the career tracks that we focus in, that we provide the hard skills training, those range from um, IT help desk support, um, software development. We also have a business program. So if you're interested in launching a career, like in a more business setting, we also offer, you know, again, business fundamentals. Um, and that can fall like under accounting, project management. Um, and I believe we do HR and marketing as well. Um, so again, you know, we provide those um, first six months of training in those, in, you know, one of those fields. And also um, we do soft skills training as well. So you'll be trained in areas like public speaking, uh, resume building, um, you know, um, networking skills, right, and things of that nature. So you'll be receiving all of those soft skills along with the technical skills in either business finance or IT. And then once you complete that first six months, you'll then move on to your six months of internship. Right, so um, Gear Up is currently partnered with companies like Bank of America, uh, JP Morgan Chase, Google, Spotify, LinkedIn, uh, Goldman Sachs, just to name a few. Um, so uh, once you complete those first six months of classroom training, you'll then go off to an internship at one of the companies that I just mentioned. So it's during this internship phase where you'll really have an opportunity to gain, you know, a lot of legitimate exposure and experience at a top name company here in the New York City. Um, slash New Jersey area. Um, so, um, and, and again, once you complete that internship, you'll have an opportunity to um, go into that and in, go into that company as a full-time employee. So once you complete your internship, there is the possibility of you being converted into a full-time employee at one of those amazing companies that I uh, mentioned before. Um, so again, you know, Europe is open to those who, you know, aren't exactly looking to take the, you know, traditional college route. Um, you know, it's, the, it's for those who, you know, just want to gain those hard skills and those soft skills and start really um, gaining that work experience. Um, so that's all I have as far as, you know, what Europe is and, you know, basically what it's all about and what it can provide to young adults um, like yourselves. Um, so, um, Matt, are we opening up for questions or... So the audience can submit their questions via the Q&A and you can respond accordingly. Um, but if you're done presenting, we'll move along to our next speaker. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And up next is Suni Oswego. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Cruz, and I am Associate Director of Admissions here at SUNY Oswego. also happen to be a proud SUNY Oswego alum. I graduated from SUNY Oswego with a degree in marketing, minor in economics and graphic design. Had a phenomenal experience as a student at Oswego. Um, so briefly, really what I really want to share with you um, all today is a little bit about who we are. We are a SUNY school, part of the state university system. So for those who are familiar with SUNY, SUNY is the largest comprehensive state university system in the United States. We are the sixth largest four-year SUNY school. So we have a little over 8,000 students right on our campus. Um, we occupy a mile of Lake Ontario. So that's not an ocean that you see in the background. That's actually a uh, one of the Great Lakes, Lake Ontario. We are considered the most residential state university campus in the SUNY system. Um, so you'll find a very dynamic community of students that are really engaged. They're looking for that traditional residential experience. Um, we have 14 residential communities. We have five dining halls to really maintain and have uh, that really vibrant campus community. 
As we think about our campus, we've undergone some major renovations, $1.1 billion in brand new academic and residential space. So that our students are um, having state-of-the-art facilities as they partake and be, uh, become members of our campus community. So when we think about our location, we're centrally located. So we're far enough that you get away from your family, but close enough that you can make that journey right back down to the city. We are uh, right in the center part of the state. So you'll see a map over to your right side. Um, so easy to get to, you can fly up to Syracuse International Airport from LaGuardia or JFK. We have the Megabus Greyhound trains um, options through the Amtrak. We also have our own express options to bring students back and forth between New York City. We're medium sized 8,000, 6,800 undergraduate students. We don't believe large lecture hall classes are great learning environments. So we really emphasize that small classroom experience throughout your college experience with us. Um, the average classroom size at Oswego is 24, 17 to one student to teacher ratio. We actually do limit how many lecture hall classes you can take as an undergrad. So you will not take more than four lecture hall classes as you um, matriculate over to Oswego. So that means that most of your classes are gonna have anywhere, if you're taking a lecture, anywhere from 45 students to 150 students. When we think about majors, there's a lot going on. There's 130 majors, 260 minors and concentrations within four colleges. We're a liberal arts school. Um, so really students are taking a little bit of everything. So it's perfectly okay to not know what you want to do. 15% of all first year students are undeclared undecided students. But we have four colleges to guide you. We have the College of Liberal Arts and Science, nationally really well known for our, our STEM programs. So we do see a lot of students in computer, electrical, and software engineering. We have the only zoology program in the state of New York. So we do see a lot of future zoologists. Um, we also have traditional things like criminal justice, psychology, human development, linguistics, physics, you name it, it's all in that school. School business, ACSB accredited, not, uh, so international accreditation allows you to actually focus on multiple fields in business. So you have marketing, finance, risk and insurance management. Then you have the School of Communication, Media and the Arts, nationally well known for our broadcast and mass communication. But we also have a lot of offerings in the arts. So things like animation and video game design tends to be one of our focuses there. And then we have a School of Education that offers everything in the field of teaching. As a traditional campus, our students are really engaging themselves. We, um, they're getting involved as soon as they get to our campus. We have, like I previously said, 8,000 students on campus. We have 90% of students living in community. So when students are choosing to come to our campus, they really want that full college experience. 96% uh, of our students stay on campus um, every weekend. So we're not a campus where students are heading home every Friday after class. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of activities like color runs, concerts. We have over 200 clubs and organizations to ensure that you're having a meaningful college experience. Um, really diverse community as well. Close to 35% of all our students identify as um, African-American, Latino, Asian, Native American. We have 14 communities on our campus that house students in different options. So we have suites, we have townhouses, high rises, gender inclusive, LGBT friendly housing. We also have five dining facilities on campus and all you can eat dining experience. So you can eat as many meals as you want. So if you wanna stop by a dining hall and grab breakfast 10 times, no one's going to stop you. So the freshman 15 is real. Um, we also have 15 restaurants for you to walk in and grab coffee on the go, donuts, um, cupcakes, anything you name. And then you have an off-campus dining experience that runs from seven o'clock at night till four o'clock in the morning. So you'll always have something to eat. A lot of activities also on the lake, since we have a beach on our campus, we have our own little bowling alley, movie theater, on campus to help students have a great experience. Um, when it comes to the total value, 2274 a year. So as New York State residents, we are a SUNY school, so we're a really affordable option. 95% uh, of our graduates are employed or go on to graduate school, but 90% of all our students find jobs in their chosen field of study. When it comes to the college application process with us, we're on the Common App and the SUNY application, they're both equal use the application you feel more comfortable using. We don't have a preference, so definitely check in with your college office. When it comes to the college application process with us, we really have a holistic review process, meaning that we look at everything. You're not just a number for us. We wanna see that personal statement. We wanna see your uh, extracurricular activities since you're joining a campus community. We wanna see what you're gonna bring to enhance this campus community. Uh, we also have programs like EOP, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with the EOP program, the Education Opportunity Program, which is offered at Oswego as well. So in terms of numbers, 
average GPA for the incoming class was around the 90, uh, around uh, 1,200 on the SATs, 24 on the ACT. For EOP students, 86, 960, 18 on the ACT. We are test optional for this uh, past class year. We're still waiting for SUNY to decide what is our test policy for next year. I kind of anticipate that we'll also be test optional as well. And now we look forward to seeing your questions in the chat. Thank you for your time. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, next presentation is from Russell Sage College. Awesome, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Dan. Uh, I am the New York City Admissions Counselor with Russell Sage College. Um, I'm gonna do things just a little bit differently uh, from my colleagues here. I have just a few quick um, points I want to uh, mention to you folks. And then um, I have a couple of short videos I'll share with you as well, because I, I don't know that I can do um, Sage Justice in just a few minutes of my own, of my own speaking. So, um, so like I said, hi, Dan, I'm Dan. I'm the New York City Admissions Counselor. Um, Russell Sage is a small private college with uh, two campuses in New York's Capital District in Albany and in Troy. Uh, on, uh, academically, we have uh, over 50 different programs, um, but our, uh, our most popular programs include uh, the programs in the health sciences, uh, including nursing, PT and OT, um, pre-med. Uh, our art programs, interior spatial design, graphic and media design, uh, and art and extended media, uh, then childhood education and criminal justice. Um, on the financial side of things, we, uh, we give out uh, generous financial aid packages that range from $15,000 to $21,500 off of your total bill each year for all four years. Uh, and this is on top of whatever government aid you might be eligible for. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a growing HEOP program. Um, myself and my colleagues have been uh, doing a, uh, have been hard at work uh, trying to uh, expand the program and to try and, you know, just make sure we can get in as many students as possible. Um, and then beyond those two things, we have lots of different ways for students to get involved uh, both on and off campus. We have um, a bunch, uh, we have over 75 different clubs on campus, uh, so there's lots of ways uh, to get involved uh, with things that you're interested in uh, and opportunities for leadership. Uh, we have 20 different NCAA Division III, uh, Division III athletic teams, uh, so if you're an athlete, uh, please let us know and you know, we'll be happy to put you in touch with the coaches. Um, and we also have, um, we have a robust experiential learning um, we have uh, robust experiential learning opportunities uh, on campus as well. So every uh, every uh, every program will require an internship uh, or student teaching experience or clinical experience or something like that. And because of that, ninety four percent of our uh, ninety four percent of our um, graduates receive a job offer or go on to graduate school uh, within a year. Um, it's free to apply to SAGE. Uh, you can either apply uh, directly on our website or via the Common app. Uh, and we are standardized test optional. Uh, we were that way before COVID and we are going to remain that way after COVID. So um, yeah, we're really, uh, we really hope you apply. And so with that, I will share my screen.
and that's just sort of uh, you know our campus at, uh, at a glance. I uh, will also show you guys. Um, yeah, we have a minute left. Um, so you know, we'll, I guess we'll, uh, you know, we'll stop there. But if you have any questions, I really hope uh, I really hope you folks ask them uh, in the uh, uh, in the chat. Um, I'd be happy to answer. I have somebody ask about the GPA requirements. Um, our uh, average GPA that we look for is about a two point five. Uh, and the most popular major, um, uh, the most our most popular major is uh, nursing. In terms of our undergraduate programs, uh, we have a lot of them. Uh, they're interdisciplinary, meaning they draw from a lot of different subjects, um, and um, a lot of them can be uh, tend to prepare you for specific careers as well. Good questions. And we're SAT optional. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, so now we'll, we'll transition to our next presentation from the University at Albany. Okay, y'all, let me share my screen real quick. Hello everyone, my name is Garrett Manning. I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor here at the University at Albany. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Uh, just a little bit about myself, you know, I grew up and have lived in the Albany area my whole life and I graduated from UAlbany with my master's in 2018 so I can attest to how good of a school it is to attend and how good of a city it is to live in. Uh, just a little bit of overview about us. We're one of the 64 campuses in the, SUN in the SUNY system and one of the four major research universities which includes us, Buffalo, Binghamton, and Stony Brook. And what that means is that we do our best to get our students hands-on experiences through our numerous internship programs, research opportunities, and the world-class faculty we have are very good resources and mentors for you. Uh, their current or former professionals in their field, for example, we have an FBI agent on campus who teaches a couple intra-level classes in our criminal justice program. And so these are great opportunities to, to connect with people in the field and you know get your foot in the door going forward. Here's a little, little bit of info about the city. Um, you know, we're obviously located in Albany, which is the capital of New York State. And so that bodes really well for those research, internship, and volunteer opportunities I was just talking about. You know, across all of our majors, there's opportunities to get involved with hands-on uh, experiences. You know, we send 75 students each year to intern with the New York State Senate and Assembly. Uh, we send people to intern with the you know, uh, Department of Health, Department of Homeland Security, you know, New York State FBI office, uh, New York State Crime Lab, big businesses like Goldman Sachs, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, they have offices in the area. They would look to recruit our students. We have a few major hostels in the area that our students can you know, intern and shadow at. So it's just a really good area to be if you wanna get that hands-on experience. And then just student life here, you know, our campus has 13,000 undergraduate students on it. Uh, but what's cool about being in this uh, Albany area is you're part of what's called the Capital Region, which includes in close, in close proximity uh, the cities of Albany, Schenectady, Troy, Latham, you know, Rensselaer, even as far as Saratoga. And within this larger capital region area, there's about 20 other colleges adding up to over 65,000 undergraduate students. So when you go to downtown Albany, as you can see pictured there, there's a lot of bars, clubs, restaurants, concert venues, you know, event spaces to hang out. And you won't just be seeing students from our campus, but seeing students from all the other campuses around as well. And then Another big benefit is the central location of Albany. You know, we're about two and a half hours away from New York City, three hours away from Boston, three and a half hours away from Montreal, and so it's very easy to get around and access other areas. Here's a list of the different majors and programs that we have here. Uh, we have over 50 majors and over 70 different minors to choose from. We're divided into nine different colleges. Uh, our top uh, most popular majors include our School of Business, uh, our Schools of Criminal Justice, uh, our Rockefeller College of Public Affairs and Policy, you know, political science, not too many better places to study political science than the capital of New York State. Uh, things like psychology, biology, chemistry are very popular here. And over the last five years, we've added our College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security and Cybersecurity, as well as our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We have over 300 different student clubs and organizations to choose from. So it's a very, you know, vibrant campus with a lot of different clubs, anything that you can think of, there's opportunities to do that here. We are a division one athletic school with 18 different division one programs that you can see listed right there in front of you. 
Atlanta. We also have club sports you can be a part of, as well as intramural sports you can participate in as well. And here's just a little bit of info about the application process. You know, we accept two forms of application, the Common App or the SUNY App. It uh, doesn't matter which one, you know, whichever one you decide to do is fine by us. Uh, our middle 50% of accepted students last year had about 88 to 94 GPA or 3.4 to 3.8, you know, depending on what scale you're using. Uh, we were test optional for fall 2021, so we did not require the SAT or ACT. Uh, we have not gotten a word on what we're going to be doing with that going forward. So, you know, if you have the opportunity to take the test, you know, I might recommend doing so just to cover your bases, but there is the possibility that we'll still be test optional for fall 2022. Uh, here's just some deadlines for you as well. We have a freshman early action deadline on November 1st. So if you're able to get us all your admissions material by November 1st, we'll get you a decision sometime in December. Otherwise, you have until February 1st to apply and May 1st to confirm your enrollment and uh, confirm that you're coming to the school. So that does it for my uh, presentation portion of it. Uh, if you, anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, thank you for being here. And uh, I look forward to you know, hopefully speaking with you soon. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, a reminder to our audience, please do put your questions in the Q&A for any of our presenters. Uh, and our final presentation is going to be from Utica College. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Um, my name is Adam Francis. Uh, please excuse me. I'm actually in the hospital, but I wanted to be here with you guys. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to really speak with you and just give you a better understanding of what Utica College is about. Um, a little bit about me. I started at uh, Utica College um, in October of 2020, uh, but I have been recruiting in New York City for the last four years. Um, so I'm very familiar with the city. I was born and raised in the Bronx, and I'm actually located in the Bronx. I'm a regional counselor for Utica College. Um, so a little bit about Utica, uh, just very quick facts. Um, we're about three and a half hours from the city, um, probably about an hour and a half from Albany, um, so we do have those same connections. Uh, some of our major programs include criminal justice, um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and nursing. Um, those are probably our biggest programs. Um, like many of the other uh, counselors, how they've said that they like to have their students um, work with uh, different um, internships and everything, we are very big on that as well. Um, as I said, those are our big biggest majors. Um, with that being said, you know it's very important to have um, you know, connections with hospitals, connections uh, with criminal, uh, criminal justice institutions and uh, uh, operations um, for our cybersecurity program on campus as well. Um, we do have FBI um, operations that happen on our campus um, because we have some of the top technology um, for our uh, cybersecurity program as well. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen real quick, and that way I will be able to go through um, our regular admissions presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'll also put my information in the chat for you guys, and you can feel free to email me at any time. All right, so um, as you guys can see, we have an 11 to uh, one student to faculty ratio. Um, the average class size is 20. Um, we have 16 of the top 20 uh, majors that are in demand right now. Uh, that includes nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, uh, criminal justice. We have business, of course, uh, um, which is always going to get you a valued degree. Um, we also have education programs. We have psychology. Um, so we do have a lot of programs that um, are very popular. Uh, we have 26 division three sports. Um, and we actually are like very um, affordable um, for a private institution in New York State. Uh, we actually restructured our institution about five years ago, um, where instead of increasing it, we actually cut it by 40% uh, to make it more affordable for students. Um, so, so these are some of our most uh, sought after majors um, that students come to our school for. Um, as you see, like I said, cybersecurity, education, uh, fraud and financial crime investigation, uh, health sciences. So our health science program 
Um, if you're not directly accepted into nursing, occupational therapy, or physical therapy, you can always come into health sciences. And then um, once you complete two years, you don't have to reapply. Um, as long as you meet the GPA requirement, you'll move into the nursing or occupational therapy program. Um, so that is a good way to get into that as well. Uh, we know that not all students are going to have the best GPA, um, but we do look for about an 85 for nursing, occupational therapy, and physical therapy, and then um, about an 80 for our other majors. Um, so we do try to make it affordable, and we try to make it feasible for the students who want to be at Utica uh, so they can really um, receive a great education. Um, as many other schools, we are on our Common app. Um, we also have our own application on the website, uh, just visiting utica.edu slash apply. Um, so uh, the requirements for us, uh, we actually just look for a high school transcript, uh, essay, which is 300 words, um, letter of recommendation, and we are SAT and ACT optional for all of our programs. Um, and we actually got word earlier this year uh, that we'll be uh, SAT optional until the fall of 2023. Um, so for OT, PT, and nursing, uh, since we do have direct entry program um, for you know, uh, PhDs and everything like that, um, we do emphasize that we do want math and science grades for all four years. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of math or science you take. It can be algebra, calculus, um, pre-calc, uh, statistics, um, trigonometry, any four years of math um, or science um, will meet your requirements. So 95% of our um, students receive financial aid. We offer merit scholarships, um, which is dependent uh, upon your high school um, GPA and your high school success. Um, we strongly advise that all students complete the FAFSA, whether or not you, know, you feel like your family will receive money. Um, it doesn't hurt to complete the FAFSA. It's a free application and it's a chance for you to get free money. So uh, we always encourage all of our students to do that. Um, tuition. Uh, tuition is $21,560. Um, without room and board, if you would like to room and board, everything comes up to about $34,368. Uh, we do have an option where you can also receive a free iPad. And instead of buying books each year, you can just uh, download all of your books onto your iPad, which is a pretty cool feature for a lot of students as well. Um, on campus housing, uh, we have eight different residential halls. Um, Pioneer Village being our most uh, renovated, our newest um, dormitory on campus. Uh, we have about 100 student clubs and organizations. Um, if you wanna start a new student, I mean, organization, you can have about five friends and it'll be easy for you to do so. Uh, we have leadership programs, uh, transportation back to the city, and we have dining services um, running from 7.30 in the morning to about 12 at night, which is pretty cool on campus. Um, as I said earlier, we have 26 Division three sports, uh, 30 intramural sports, four club sports. Uh, we're number one in hockey and attendance for over 10 years, and that's due because we play in uh, um, a professional arena. Um, so we play in a minor league arena, which is pretty cool. So every year our students love to come out uh, parents get the season tickets um, and everything like that. And we're supported heavily by our community. Um, just seeing here, um, these are some of the most uh, recent innovations. Uh, we have a brand new construction management building on campus that was completely funded by alumni. We have a new science complex, uh, which is gonna be open by fall. Uh, we just got, um, we received a $2 million uh, donation for a brand new outdoor track. Um, and a new practice field. So um, a lot of our alumni are investing in the college because they see that you know it's taking them to higher levels. So they know that the students there deserve the same opportunity. So we do invest in our students and we make sure that we give back as well. Um, these are some of the things that are within the Utica area, um, just when you're not in class and you wanna get out and um, just explore. And then these are all the opportunities um, for transportation to Utica. Um, so even though Utica is three and a half hours away, we do have an opportunity to get to Utica and get back to the city as soon as possible. All right. Um, so that concludes my presentation. I don't want to be too long, um, but as I said, I did put my um, email in the chat. So if anybody wants more information, please feel free to 
email me and I will definitely get those answers to you. Um, Great, thanks so much, Adam. Um, thank you to problem. all of our presenters. Um, <clears throat> we now have a few minutes for some Q&A before we wrap things up. And so I'd like to invite all of our presenters to come back on camera and respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And if you could respond in the same order that you presented, that would be great. I guess I could get us started. Um, so I, I mean, when going through this college process, I really recommend that students take advantage and take their time to do some research. I know that COVID has really unbended this entire college process. Um, so take your time, take advantage of all the, all the resources available to you online and take a, uh, go on virtual tours and join information sessions. I know we only had six minutes, so it's very limiting in terms of what we could share with you throughout this presentation. Um, we're also lucky that we live in New York State. New York State has so many opportunity programs out there to support students and so many options. I mean, the state university system, the largest comprehensive state university system in the United States. So there is a pathway for you, uh, regardless of your academic, social, economic situation, um, you'll find a state university campus for you. So take advantage of everything that's out there for you. So if we're not, uh, you know, if we're not going in the presentation order, I definitely want to definitely piggyback off of what um, Emmanuel says, uh, was just saying, you want to do your research on a, uh, on the schools that you're looking into, um, working at a, uh, as somebody who uh, attended a SUNY school, I can definitely attend, uh, attest to the uh, to the value that the SUNY system brings, the quality of education and the affordability. Um, but also now as somebody who now works for a private college, um, I can say, um, I wish I had looked a little bit closer at them as well, um, because, um, uh, uh, because cost wise, they tend to be uh, more competitive than you might think, even though sticker price is, uh, there's a huge difference in the sticker prices. Um, I would also say, uh, you know, come visit, come visit any of the colleges, you know, that are still doing visits right now, uh, because one of the uh, most telling things for you as a student about, uh, you know, whether or not you want to come to a particular college is when you step foot on campus, do you feel like you can see yourself there, right? Um, so, you know, if you're able to do that, I strongly recommend it. Yeah, and I definitely, I definitely agree with what Emmanuel and Dan said. Um, you know, not a lot of schools are doing tours. I know we're, we're you know, we're doing tours. I, I think we're, we're you know, one of the few, but as it starts to open up, you know, definitely, you know, take the time to go visit, you know, you know, try not to discount a school just because it might be a little far away, you know, make the, you know, make the effort to go visit places because you don't know, you, you don't know where you're going to want to go until you step on the campus. Like so many students, they think they want to go somewhere and then they step on a campus and they're just like, no, this isn't for me or the opposite, you know, they go to a campus and walk around and just love it. So that's, you know, immersing yourself in the campus environment, you know, because it's not, you know, academics is a big part of it, but also this is where you'll be living for the next four years and it's a big, you know, formative portion of your life. So you want to know that you feel at home where you go. Um, and then also, you know, go to the, you know, accepted student events, open houses, you know, different departments across campuses will sometimes be hosting like information sessions. You know, if there's a program you're interested in, you know, check it out. Uh, and, you know, don't feel, don't feel shy about looking up programs on the website, reaching out to people in the department, because you're not going to get much better information than if you reach out to a specific academic department itself to you know get the info you want. So piggybacking off of what all of my other colleagues said, um, it is definitely um, you know something that you want to take into consideration. Uh, look at CUNY schools, look at SUNY schools, look at private schools. 
Um, like Dan said, um, I remember him saying it, uh, you know, the sticker price is there, but once you go through the financial aid process, um, you will understand that uh, sometimes private schools will um, give you a little more money simply because they know that they have to compete with SUNY or CUNY schools. Um, don't be afraid to apply to schools that not only that you want to attend, but apply to some other schools that might be similar um, just because, you know, you've heard about it or, you know, don't ever, you know, limit your opportunities. Um, you know, take the opportunity to visit schools. Like Garrett said, um, I know Utica College, we specifically, uh, we definitely just had our um, first on-campus event. We did our Acceptance Students Day, so we are open um, to visit campus and everything like that. But um, take the opportunity, take the time, speak with counselors if you have the opportunity, um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. You can ask Emmanuel. I know Emmanuel is great about um, answering things, whether it's about um, Oswego or about another college. Um, I'll answer questions and we will put, put you in the right position um, and with the proper communications with the right people if you're not even interested in our college. So, um, you know, we're here to help you guys. We're not um, against you. And at the end of the day, we don't definitely want to see you succeed because we've all been in your shoes. Um, and we know how it feels to have to go through the college search. Um, so, you know, ask questions. Um, definitely make sure that you're looking at different colleges. Um, you know, of course, you want to start off with, you know, schools that have your major, but just make sure that you're applying to a good amount of colleges. Don't say, hey, you know, this is the three colleges I want to go to. Uh, take the time to apply to 10 schools. Um, Cause at the end of the day, if you go through the process, you'll learn different things and you might, uh, you know, think that one school that you thought wasn't for you is actually the school that you really fell in love with. Um, so just take that opportunity, make sure that you're taking every moment um, seriously um, and, you know, just really communicate with what uh, the people that you get in contact with about what you want in a college. And we will definitely help you, whether it's um, for our college or another institution. I'd like to give Shane from Europe a chance to weigh in before we go to our next question. Yeah, I mean, basically everyone, you know, kind of just summed up, you know, um, what it is, you know, to really go through the college uh, searching process. Cause, you know, and my biggest thing is simply to just go after something that you enjoy doing. Um, Cause you know, for me personally, that's something that, you know has really worked well for me and I've seen it work well for a lot of people because if you truly, you know, pursue something that you truly enjoy to do, and it's not so much for like a paycheck, right? Because I know there's fields out there that could offer, you know, careers that, you know, would pay a certain amount of money, like maybe higher than other fields would. Um, but, you know, again, my whole thing is just finding something that truly makes you happy. And, and, you know, ultimately that would lead to a career that, you know, wouldn't feel so much like work because you enjoy doing it so much. Excellent. Thank you all. Um, so one more question before we wrap up. Uh, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? I guess I could get us started. Um, my favorite tradition as an alum and also as a student, uh, former, uh, as an alum and as a, a staff member, is our tor torchlight ceremony, um, which is our gathering uh, for first year students and our transfer students who are coming together where the Alumni Association, the president passes a torch of learning down to our incoming class, um, which is symbolic because it's the first time that you'll see the entire class together. And it's the last time you'll see everybody gathered in one space together. Um, because the next time you'll do this tradition is again at the eve of your graduation, where your family welcomes you as graduates of the institution. Um, and it's symbolic because I, I work with a lot of first generational students, low income students, and primarily because we're in New York City. Um, and for many of my students, this is the first time that they first in their family to actually walk across the stage. And this is the time where their family gets to celebrate together and get that recognition. Um, and faculty are there to welcome them as graduates because, you know, four years is a lot, it goes by fast, but it's remarkable to see that students are walking across the stage, especially um, a lot of people of color that I work with and seeing them have that opportunity and families get that acknowledgement for the first time of all the sacrifices they've done. Um, yes, I can go next. 
Um, before I get to that, um, I, I want to just uh, speak to something Adam said. Uh, this is maybe counterintuitive to a lot of students, um, but you always want to ask us. Um, uh, you always want to uh, communicate with your admissions counselors because we have a lot of connections uh, within the field. Um, you know, you may think, oh, he's an admissions counselor. He's got to he's got to sell the college to you. So, you know, maybe he won't, you know, be upfront with you about if there's a better program. Um, and I will tell you, while yes, we do have those, uh, you know, uh, the numbers to meet, of course, um, if you are going to be really well suited um, elsewhere. Um, I, I don't want to speak uh, for my colleagues, but that's the impression I get is that uh, they, as well as myself, would be more than happy to put you in contact with folks who can serve you better um, if, uh, if our own institution can. But more to the question of traditions. Uh, Definitely, my favorite tradition here at Sage is the um, is our annual um, river cruise down the Hudson uh, down the Hudson River uh, for uh, for our accepted students. Um, it's a nice night out. Um, it's a good chance for students to uh, mingle and socialize with each other, um, as well as uh, some faculty and staff. Um, just a really nice event. So one one of my favorite traditions on campus. Um, for those of you who haven't like been to the school, we have a bunch of like different fountains on campus. It's something that we're really well known for. It makes it like really beautiful and everything, but we have this main fountain that's in the center of our academic podium, which is like pretty much in the center of the school where there's this like really big kind of like six inch deep like wade pool around it. And then there's like the fountain all around it. And then um, when so when spring hits and the weather gets nice and they turn on the fountains again for the first time of the year, you know students make a really big deal out of it. So everyone will gather in our you know, academic podium. Um, you know they'll set up you know like volleyball nets and you know be lounging around and having fun and it just makes it a very uh, fun environment for students and really marks you know the beginning of nice weather and just you know good times all around. So for me, my favorite uh, tradition on campus is called Squirrel Day. Um, so it's in honor of a squirrel that actually ran across some cable lines and cut off all the power on campus. Um, so that one day uh, they were instructed to figure out how to keep students engaged and you know, make campus lively. Um, so of course classes were canceled, there was no power in the buildings or anything like that. Um, even though we did get the power up running later on that day, um, the president had basically said, you know, to bring out everything possible. Um, so we played games, we had um, cookout, they brought all the food outside and everything. And it was basically a day um, on campus where all of our students are now just, um, you know, they take the time to have an, you know, outdoor experience, um, which is really needed these days, um, especially with COVID. Um, so, you know, it's something that we do and participate in every year, um, just honoring that one squirrel on campus. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> I could jump in. I don't know if I can top squirrel day. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Um, but, you know, one thing that, you know, we typically do with all of our students at Europe um, is that for each class, we have um, pretty much like a potluck um, celebration. So um, it's an opportunity for students, you know, to, you know, bring in different foods, like we play games because, you know, at Europe, there's so many students from different like cultures and backgrounds. So it's a nice opportunity for students to, you know, get exposed to, you know, different types of dishes, different, you know, types of, you know, games and celebrations that we all do. So, you know, of course, that was, you know, back when we were still in person, it may look a little different now at um, being virtual, but we're still going to make that happen regardless. Um, so, you know, the Pollock celebration is definitely um, one of my personal favorites. Um, and it's it, it kind of sounds similar to Squirrel Day, just minus the squirrel part. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you all for uh, for that great information. Um, I want to say thank you to our audience for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We do appreciate your feedback. A reminder to sign up for additional sessions that are taking place as part of this college fair. And you'll be able to find a recording um, from this session and others in about a week at strivescan.com slash urban assembly. So have a great rest of your day.